How you doing again? Um, I want to do a video as an intro to a couple other videos. Um, I'm in the middle right now. This. I figured I'd do some videos. I had already disassembled this. What this is is a Carter uh, ABS carburetor. Um, you know, in order to know what that is, um, you might have to know what the, uh, the Carter carburetors are. Like, I don't know if you've ever heard of the WCFB, the World Carter 4 barrel. Um, if you're an old car aficionado, you probably would know them because they used them in like Mercury's and Chevy's back in the 50s. Um, this was like a, uh, you know, probably a, a, you know, metal carburetor. Um, kind of square, usually four or five hundred CFM, and had a, a weighted uh, air valve for the secondary. Um, kind of like this guy right here. This here is the the uh, the later one. They introduced the WCFB in 1952, and by the 60s they needed something newer and bigger because the engines were getting bigger and they needed more gas. They introduced this. This is the uh, Carter AFB. Um, this is my demonstration model. This thing's beat. It's got a broken air horn. Um, but I picked it up cheap for parts, so and it's serving its purpose. The uh, because, like I said, those were only the, the WCFB was only up to four or five hundred CFM. This um, goes anywhere from like five seventy to like. I think they made a uh, they made a one for NASCAR that had actually the back that was open, so it was like three barrel actually, but it was an AFB, and it was 950 CFM. It was like a NASCAR for a Pontiac 421. And they can make these pretty big. I mean, these can suck some some air. You know? Anyway, these were real popular in the 60s up until the emissions era. And once the emissions era started, these were done. They went to the aftermarket, and. Uh, Carter started selling them in the aftermarket. It's like a performance carburetor. And eventually, when Carter, you know, uh, you know, started falling by the wayside in the uh, 80s and the 90s, Edelbrock bought them and bought the carburetor business. And Edelbrock performer, <laughs> pretty slick uh, Edelbrock, Edelbrock there. And uh, so, what was to follow was the. Uh, is this guy. This followed the AFB. This is the, let's show you here, the uh, valve. This is the air valve. This is in the back. And it's spring operated. And it, that's what controls the airflow on the secondary. No weighted uh, air valve. So I made it a little bit lighter. It's a little bit smaller too. Because um, if you look at this, yeah, I'll show you. You see how wide that is? Right? Well, look at that. See? Not as wide, not as heavy. So, there are benefits to this carburetor. It's lighter and it's not as big. So, if you want a compact but you know, carburetor that can suck some air, this is not a bad choice. Oh, well, so we'll see. <laughs> uh, my plan is to rebuild this. And this one right here is actually a vintage ABS. This is a 1966 Carter ABS from a, uh, a Chevy uh, Chevelle or a Nova 327. Not sure which. It actually came from to me from eBay. <laughs> in pretty nice shape, actually. Um, if you look at this, I mean the, p the plates and everything in real nice shape. I love these plates. These are so heavy. They're like coins. You know, these old ones. And even this is like nice and thick. Now, see the latest stuff like the, on these uh, AFBs, like this. <laughs> not so, not so much. Uh, you know, a little bit on the thin side. <clears throat> Excuse me, but this you know the metal is nice, and this this one I this was black when I got it pretty much, and uh, all this clean here is from uh, soap and water, a little vinegar, hot water, and a good brush, and I, I mean I'm not even done yet, and uh, it's pretty clean. The aluminum is, is coming right back up. I could even polish this if I want. I'm not sure if I want to paint it or polish it. Well, one or the other, but my idea is to rebuild this rather than spend $350 on a Carter ABS or buy a used one for like $250. I figured, well, I would, you know, kind of like this stuff, so I figured, well, I'm gonna rebuild it. I mean, an old ABS and probably minus the idle compensator, which is a little job. Buy metallic spring, 
they put right in here. I don't know why they did back in the in the 60s because they thought they were being slick. Because uh, when it, you know the engines got hot and they'd have issues, you know. But I have a you know they, this was before the era of like uh, you know having a you know a good return line or uh, a good charcoal filter you know box, which I have I'm actually have both. So I need an idle compensator like I need a you know hole in the head. You know I don't need that. Um, my idle block, the form I'm using now doesn't have any hot air issues. You know it starts fine. Could be 90 degrees and you turn the key and it starts right up. You could turn it off, you could start it right up. You know? No problems. Um, it's very similar in design to the AFB, except on the bottom you'll see. See the uh, the newer ABS, the Edelbrock ABS has these. Uh, ABS two has annular boosters, but even the ABS has dog leg boosters. Now these are dog leg bo dog legs right here, right? And they go in here, right? But that's only for the primaries. The secondaries in these use these tubes, right, with holes in them. And uh, that's actually what they used at a WCFB. So it's kind of an older design, but uh, you know, as far as the secondaries, it should work pretty well. If you look at the uh, the AFB here, you can see aside from the uh, weighted air valve here, you see these dog legs in here, which this doesn't have. And also the back of it isn't as open because it doesn't have that weighted air valve. So if you look at these, you'll see that this one is much, it's actually a smaller carburetor physically. Even though the, the base of them are pretty close, like the, the, the floats, from float to float, if you hold them like this, they're actually almost the same, but it is wider and this is quite a bit heavier because of the air valve for one and because the base is bigger. So this does have one advantage to it. And people would say, why well, I'm crazy, why we're going to use a 1966 carpet. Well, because probably because I am, maybe I'm crazy, I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's a light carburetor. And I figured well, it's just for fun. So I'm just going to, you know, do a video on uh, reassembly of this with a couple of modifications to make it work, um, you know, in a modern uh, setup. Because I'm going to be using it with an MSD ignition, you know, an HEI MSD ignition, and on a small block Chevy, you know, nothing special. But uh, we'll see how it runs. I'm just curious. Like I said, it was a pretty good deal. I got this for less than fifty dollars, and uh, a rebuild kit is um, thirty bucks. And I don't foresee an, any strong need for parts because uh, my uh, floats are good, you know. So I don't need those. Um, I have extra throttle shafts, a couple of them that will fit from that performer. That's no good. And so the only thing I really need is this the basic kit which is like actually it's like it's 25 bucks so I figured I figured I'm, I'm gonna be able to do this whole thing for about $80 plus some you know elbow grease and uh, I figure if I do I could sell the performer that I have probably for more than that and uh, so this essentially in the end will cost me nothing and I'm hoping that it will produce um, a smoother running uh, engine at part throttle because my only gripe with the Edelbrock, you know, with Edelbrock, you know, performer the AFB style carburetor is that from idle to, you know, from like a, from idle to like, you know, mid throttle, you know, there's some issues. I mean, there's a little part throttle issue there. I mean, it'll run at part throttle fine, but just if you want to, ch if you change the throttle position rapidly, you know, depending, you know, although I think I've come to the conclusion that part of it is actually, and that's another thing I'm going to do, um, that probably will do a video, is I'm going to do a, a, a CIA cold air intake for this carburetor, because I've noticed um, in the middle of dead of winter with that AFB style carburetor, that boy, you know, when the engine just starts to warm up, but it's still kind of cold, and the air is cold, air is coming. Boy, that thing runs so much better. So I think that kind of the hot air, and you know, we don't we take it for granted with fuel injected cars. Um, do they all have CIAs? They all have all cold air intakes. They're not sucking in hot air unless you're some you know, uh, you know, you know, 19 year old who thinks he's going to gain power by putting in a hot air intake under his, the hood of his Honda, <laughs> which no, it doesn't work too well. Um, actually lose horsepower by doing that 
but that's what a lot of people don't realize with uh, you know older cars is that they would definitely benefit from, from a cold air intake. You know, not only would you gain horsepower, but I think that the engine would run smoother. Engines don't really like to run on hot air, you know. Not too hot anyway, so we'll see about that later. But anyway, the whole point of this is that I'm going to do a couple of videos of this. I, I they said the disassembly is already done. I said I rewashed this and cleaned the parts and whatever. Uh, I got to, you know, make this look pretty first. But other than that, and get the kit. And once I get the, within the next week, I'll get the kit and have that bot, you know, this whole housing looking nice. And then I'm going to put it together, do a quick video of assembly and some modifications, and then installation on the car and how it runs, you know. So and that's it. I just want to do a quick intro on uh, these figure, you know, we give a couple people who didn't know the primer on uh, Carter uh, carburetors. Of course, I didn't mention the car, you know, other than brief mention, I didn't mention the car, the thermo quad. That's a story for a different day. <laughs> and more, and it's also more in uh, line with uh, Chrysler products. See, a lot of these older AFBs and uh, the WCFBs were on uh, GMs. And yes, I'm a Chevy fan, I drive a Chevy. I'm not anti Mopar by any stretch. I've owned a lot of Mopar cars, and, uh, you know, I have had 360s, 318s, I've had Turbo 2s and 22s, and I've had an Omni GLH, and you know. So I have nothing against Mopars at all, but uh, like I said, I wouldn't put a thermal quad on a GM. It seemed kind of blasphemy. <laughs> all right, but that's it. Thank you for watching.